Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and there's been a lot going on in the Draft League community. Uh, about a week ago, Dr. Slacking put out a video with a thumbnail that proclaimed in big bold lettering that Draft is dead. And there have been a number of response videos made, of which I think I've watched a dozen or so. And my big fear is that a bunch of them end up missing the point. But taking it from the beginning, Slacking was responding to a Kelly under the radar tweet, kind of talking about how Draft League views on the whole are down. And Slacking uses this as a jumping off point. His main issues with the draft community at the moment are first, that so much of the community has optimized so much for being good at the game that they end up losing focus on being engaging during the commentary. And second, that modern draft has lost a sense of shared community and the status quo of coaches going off to the corner and doing their own thing kind of shuts down momentum for the league as a whole. And then he kind of moves to making the argument that outside commentary and live streams can create that sense of large community and hype around single events rather than kind of a diffuse group of coaches just kind of doing their own thing. And there were a couple of responses that really focused in on the section where Slacking kind of proclaims that creators are now boring. And a lot has been made out of Slacking's custom shiny comment. And truthfully, that discourse is kind of just silly. But everyone kind of agrees with Doc's point that it's really hard to be entertaining while trying as hard as everyone is to be the best. And this point's been made a bunch, but it's really hard to not think about if making a really big risk in a game will cause people to write comments about how bad a player, if there's some Discord somewhere, talking about how game choking of a play that was. Everyone wanting to be good at Draft League has undeniably made the game stronger and raised the level of competition, and, and I would argue made a lot of people less boring, but unfortunately that's also come with a bunch of players becoming toxic and a little bit jaded. And I was going to make the point in another video coming soon, but as a community, we really need to move away from the idea that there are objectively correct plays or objectively correct sets or objectively correct draft picks, right? We all have our ideas in our head of what like the top three picks should be, quote unquote, right? And we need to move towards an understanding that everybody is working with incomplete information and keeping those high levels of focus over like really long, like half hour games is really tough. I used to make league analysis videos and I used to try to make that point constantly where you really don't know what the players knew in the moment. And oftentimes decisions are being made that completely change the, the momentum of a game, something like 20 minutes into a match. And, it, and again, it's just really hard to keep focus for that long. And single turns or kind of breaks in focus just kind of ripple into game defining moments like 20 minutes later, right? And it, it goes both ways. And all that is to say that, yes, a lot of us can often be boring. But in my mind, that's more of a direct outgrowth of how toxic and singularly focused the community has kind of become. And I'll admit that when I first kind of heard Slacking talk about large events with commentators and all that stuff, my immediate fear was that people would play more safely and build more boring sets that are designed not to lose instead of kind of go for the win and just to not be embarrassed by being in front of a larger audience. But I realized kind of quickly that I was just describing what the kind of the status quo is right now. We're already in a dark period where people don't really like taking risks and we're just kind of running on a treadmill over and over again. Like I remember how excited I was the first time I saw a uh, Wolfie use a double in a game, right? And he punched major holes into a team with a cotton guard agility set and i thought it was fantastic right and then i watched that i was so excited by it i ended up using double in a league later and i won a couple games with it and then i'm sure somebody will see me use it and they'll be inspired to use it in a different way than in any way that would either of us thought to use it right that to me is when pokemon is at its best and when draft league is at its best but the more we build more safely to kind of not be embarrassed in front of an audience the less that becomes an option and the more kind of stagnant this uh, format becomes. But I think that leads me to kind of the first thing that's kind of frustrated me in this whole conversation. A lot of the response videos have kind of ended up conflating views with the health of the larger scene. And that to me misses the point entirely. I believe that you can have a very healthy scene that's really not getting a ton of views. And you could also have a draft community that gets a ton of views, but the scene is not healthy at all. And before we talk about how to make the scene better, we kind of need to like tease those things apart and kind of make sure we're talking about the same thing. And I'd honestly go further and say that a lot of the things that are being suggested are gonna actively hurt some individual's views, right? So for example, there's no doubt in my mind that if we live stream a bunch of battles with outside commentators like Slacking suggests, then people are gonna watch those commentated battles and they're gonna feel like they've gotten their fill and they're not gonna feel compelled to go to people's individual channels. Aquarius talks in their videos about league identity and in Vivid Colors uh, talk to me privately about Lee should have more centralized channels that are kind of a hub for, for battles. Uh, 
Uh, and Matt O'Shea and Sven talk about that as well in their videos. And I'll say I'm an admin in the UBL. In the lead up to the current season of the UBL, we talked a lot about kind of things that we can do for analyst content for a dedicated UBL channel. And you guys can see it was ultimately shut down. I came up pretty strongly that Power Ranking type videos were not really what gets people excited about Draft League in general, and that we should kind of do something different like uh, recap videos, like edited down videos of, of Irish's watch alongs or something to that effect where people can get a sense of what the league feels like without kind of committing to everybody's channels, right? And not to name any names, but I, but I remember kind of one of the biggest kind of resistances against that idea is that if we do have this type of channel, then people won't feel compelled to watch in individual channels. And I agreed, I relented, but ultimately, I kind of think if we want to move forward and kind of do more interesting things, we have to kind of get over ourselves in terms of worrying about individual view counts here. And I would take it a step further and say that as a community, we kind of look back on that golden era of draft league with kind of rose colored glasses, right? I believe that we kind of look fondly at those days because things were new and they were super interesting and views were at its peak, right? And honestly, a lot of us were kind of on the outside looking in to a lot of those huge, huge leagues that kind of dominated the, the community. But we should be honest about the fact that I think a lot of the reason why we think of that time so fondly is because view counts are at, the, at an all-time high right and i think people are going to bandwagon on what dog is saying out of frustration because their own views are down but i really do think that slacking is principled enough that he would be making the same arguments even if we had the same kind of big creators with big views in the community right like a lot has been made about seo and we could all become seo experts overnight and our views could go up 20 percent but all of our problems with the Draftly community would still be the same all of doc's points would still stand right and a lot of the discussion in the response videos has taken the tone of something like views are down because the league scene and creators are boring so therefore if we become less boring then views will go up and it's mostly kind of frustrating because it has a big like pick yourself up by bootstraps energy when i think we have to be more honest about again the golden age and what i mean about this rose color glasses comment where we kind of think that people were tuning into those bigger draft leagues because they did all these league identity things when really it's because the creators were big right like everything about a certain league was exactly the same except shady penguin was in one right shady penguin still get a ton of views regardless of what the rest of the league was doing right and the truth is a lot of those bigger creators did draft league even though they're views on the draft league content was down overall right the truth is if anybody's out here looking to do draft leagues for views should probably be doing shiny hunting instead right kelly under the radar said in, in a recent video that he pushed back draft league content to push out arceus videos and he's super glad he did because of the views you could be getting a ton more views just doing hardcore nuzlocks but we're all here because of the format and that's not going to necessarily come with views and this whole idea about blaming ourselves because we are as individuals are boring is kind of not the most positive solution here one thing that galadite said in the gray video was something to the effect of we used to have content creators playing leagues and now we have league players creating content right and he kind of used that as an example of, of why a lot of the players now are are kind of boring and not as entertaining but i think that's my point right about these other creators got a ton of views doing other things and then came to draft league content and that's why they got views it's not because they were these one in a million creators right and again if you really want want to get views doing draft league content go out do shiny hunting get a bunch of viewers doing that and then try to get those viewers to watch your draft league content but all that is to say that we need to disentangle these ideas of getting views and kind of doing these things for the larger health of the community i think we need to be more honest about the fact where let's say we put on a huge event with a bunch of different battles and a bunch of different commentators and everybody loves it right views for an individual creator on their individual videos might go down like five or ten percent but the views for draft league as a whole would go up like 10 to 15 percent just to make up numbers right but i think we have to be uh comfortable with the idea that individual views might take a hit in lieu of views for the larger community as a whole and i'd go a little bit further to say that creators egos and attachment to their view counts has been driving so many of the decisions that have been that are being made in our community right i've been a league commissioner and i've been in decision making positions in a number of other leagues and i can say undoubtedly that commissioners weigh kind of people's followings in whether or not to invite them right and oftentimes commissioners participate in their own leagues so oftentimes, commissioners are making decisions based on the idea that they think that inviting somebody will bring them views, right? And there's a little bit of a selfishness about that. And I really appreciate Sven for sharing his story about 
his journey as a non-upload player and how long it took him to get into upload leagues. And I'll admit that watching Sven's video made me realize more that the non-upload community is pretty big and it's a pretty big blind spot for most of us because again, we're all thinking about our view counts and us kind of shutting out the, a huge section of our community is not great for the health of the community, right? And I also really appreciated Matt O'Shea for talking about his story about when he really needed help, there were people in the community to help him. He really needed people to record battles for him. And Matt's video really resonated with me the most with respect to the idea that if we are to move forward, we have to be more unselfish about how we make our decisions and how we think about draft as a larger community. I love this idea that leagues maybe should have a couple slots open for people who can't record and help them to get their battles recorded. Maybe there should be a couple slots open for people that don't upload and maybe those people can just record their battles and have their battles commentated by other people and, and have that kind of move through the system. But those two things go directly against the status quo of us just kind of looking at people's followings and their CCS scores or whatever the fuck. And I'll share a little bit about my own story, right? I started making 3v3 battle spot videos trying to be a shitty penguin clone like a lot of people right and i desperately wanted to do draft league it was super interesting to me that it's when obviously draft league was very new but i was friends with literally nobody in the mid-tier leagues let alone like the top tier leagues and i ended up making my own league from scratch right i knew nobody but that's where i honestly made some of the best friends that i've known in this entire community right and we had people with subscriber accounts from like a couple dozen to tens of thousands right but that honestly was one of the most pure draft league experiences that i think i've ever felt and i used my battles from that league to get in other leagues like the ubl and just went on from there but i have to emphasize again i had no idea what i was doing right and that's where i kind of first met randy hld and at the time i was having issues genning but i reached out to randy for some genning help and he was very kind very giving of his time and him just asking me to, to, to kind of confirm some things with his stats because he, he didn't want to miss gen anything those turned into weekly conversations where we just talked about the, our, our matches where we just talked about other things and and honestly that started what's now a five-year-old friendship right and i also super appreciate auto mentioning that a lot of people that have gotten a bit of recognition from the ubl have come from my suggestions like i honestly wish that old server existed so i could look up dms where i first threw out names like dr slacking or frosted or jv right right because they were nowhere near the radars of the other admins and look i know a lot of people love jv i adore him but before you guys even knew who he was i was in his dms helping him optimize his ev is because he was putting his nature in the wrong slot all that is to say we have no idea the kinds of potential creators that we leave out of the conversation when we kind of singularly focus on views and honestly building up the future of the draft league community might create cause a hit to views but we have to be okay with that right i remember introducing a vgc friend that i thought had a ton of potential to the draft scene and i offered to help build with her and we mogged so i could show her certain things and ultimately draft and just singles in general wasn't for her she's now a twitch partner and a complete monster in like the twitch vgc community but i'm super happy that we had that experience i'm super happy that even though it didn't work out that i put forward the effort even though it didn't amount to much with that i'll say that maddie's section about the community coming together and providing commentary and analyst work for each other kind of lit a fire under me the most and i think it resonated with me the most and again i think a lot of it's just the community being less selfish but matt literally says i'm not going to receive without offering to give and i think that's kind of the attitude that the community needs to have I imagine in my head like a discord server where at first a group of primarily commissioners can can get together other people and share resources for like analysts and commentary work and eventually we can work towards kind of putting together like a volunteer network of people recording battles and and getting them together people that can't record and then ultimately kind of moving towards discussing how we can help innovate format wise or give certain players a chance that are bubbling up in the scene because a ton of the commissioner community has a ton of strengths right like i think if i'm good at anything it's kind of recruiting and kind of being involved in the scene and aquarius is super good at organization and being meticulous so is auto auto is really good at creating rules and formats and and helping the community move forward that way and i'll move towards a, a conclusion to this video by just saying again that there are a number of different ways that the that the way forward involves the community just getting over ourselves in, in a number of different ways right so to go back to the example of the ubl like recap show one of our biggest concerns was how time consuming of an ask it would be for other people which i totally understand but also it was brought up that having our own coaches do it would be kind of a conflict of interest and honestly we have such silly arguments about the integrity of, of draft league where we just kind of let it wither on the vine by doing nothing ultimately and believe me there are a number of other examples where we just argue in circles back and forth about the integrity of leagues and care so much about optimizing every single rule 
rule and detail for absolute competitiveness, and it all reinforces the idea that the goal of Draft League is to determine who the best is. And it sucks. It's made our community toxic. It's why people in Draft are so afraid to make a mistake. It's why people in Draft are so afraid to change. But it also just raises the anxiety level of the community as a whole, right? And there's no doubt in my mind that that shows in our final product, right? Like, I hope this person will forgive me for using them as an example, but I'm not going to name anybody. But I watched a, a League video recently where at the end of it, they lost and they were saying just how embarrassed they were and apologizing over and over because they feel like they, they've let their viewers down because they made some mistakes early in the game and it rippled out and, and they couldn't really recover. And it was really difficult to watch. It was heartbreaking to watch, right? Like, we shouldn't be taking Draft League this seriously. One final point I'll make about the golden era of, of Draft League and how we kind of look back at it with those colored glasses. I think a lot of the reason people kind of enjoyed that commentary and why people tuned into that is because they were having fun. They were they were not so concerned about every little thing and, and it just and that reflected more in the final product than commentators being boring now. And even if you do come to the conclusion that people are more boring now, I can't shake the feeling that it's because the community is, has become so toxic and so singularly focused that it's become so hard to just enjoy it ourselves. And I'll try to conclude this video by just saying that the way out of this malaise isn't just to hope that the big creators come back or are tweaking SEO to get extra views. I think it comes down to changing the culture, making it more accessible, and kind of working towards making a better product. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more Draftly content. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will once again, out.